In this video, we are going to use the Excel to do a five-step hypothesis test to test if drinks per month is significantly related to marijuana use per month. In other words, are those two correlated to each other? Okay. So still, we go into step by step. The step one uh, state the non-hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The non-hypothesis in the correlation correlation test is rho equals to zero. In other words, there is no correlation between those two variables. Okay. The alternative hypothesis um, will be rho is larger than zero or rho is smaller than zero. Okay. It depends on how you're going to um, assume the correlation. Now here, since they are all drugs, drinks are kind of drugs, marijuana is definitely a drug. So I would say they are positively correlated to each other. Okay, they are positively correlated to each other. People who uh, drinks more may be more likely to use marijuana or people who use marijuana more may be um, more likely to drink more. Okay, so we are going to do is that we assume that rho is larger than zero. That means there is a positive correlation between those two variables. Okay, now the step two is going to um, figure out the degree of freedom. In the correlation, the correlation degree of freedom is the total number of cases minus two, which is 20 minus two, now we have 18. Okay, step three is going to calculate, uh, not calculate, but looking for the critical value. And in, oh, in step two, um, for the correlation, we use the T distribution. degree of freedom 18 okay so we are going to get the t critical in the step 4 we are going to get the t of 10 right and also the unique thing about the correlation especially in the step 4 um, is that we don't directly get the t of 10, right? We get the r first. There is a thing called r, the correlation. Um, so we definitely go, let me put it this way. We're going to get the r first, and then we use the r to calculate the t of 10, okay? And step five is going to make a conclusion whether there is a correlation or whether there is no correlation, okay? So for the t-critical, we are going to, first of all, let's take a look at the table. Uh, we are looking at the one tail because it's larger than zero. It's a positive correlation. One tail um, of a level 0 0.05, degree of freedom 18. So pull out the t. Um, one tail 0.05, degree of freedom 18, that's one point, it's 1.73, okay, 1.73, let's put it here. Now, then we're going to use the Excel to calculate our R and the T of 10 and make a conclusion um, based on the R and the T of 10, right? So what do we do is that uh, we first run the data analysis here, and there is a correlation. Click OK and pick the range. So make sure they are um, the two variables are close to each other. So for or next to each other for easy selection. So drinks per month, marijuana per month. Got it, right? And uh, since we select the table the label, I'm sorry, since we select the label, the label's in the first row, we click OK. Now, the Excel gives you a very, very simple um, correlation, okay? The correlation here 
is 0 0.56 or 0 0.562. Point five six two. Point five six two. Okay, it's a very simple one. It didn't give you anything about the t. It didn't give you anything about if the correlation is significant or not. Okay, so what do we do here? Is that we use another function, which is called a regression, in the Excel to get the t. So we go into select or click data analysis. We go into regression. We pick the regression. We click OK. Now it asks you to input a Y and a X. Okay. Um, let's say since we think people drink more may use marijuana more, or people who use marijuana more may drink more, it doesn't really matter. So we just put, uh, for example, we can put the uh, marijuana use as the Y or the drinks per month as the X it doesn't matter since we select the label we put the label everything else will be a default setting we click OK okay now here comes the table okay um, so for this table you can see we have the regression stats we have the R did you see the R 0.562. Oh, that's exactly the same R we get from our correlation analysis, right? Okay, and also we have the R square. We gonna we gonna keep this R square here because we are going to use it. Okay, um, and the most important thing I want you to take a look at is the the last table. Um, it goes to the drinks per month this table here okay so for this table there are a few things um, basically two things you want to take a look at the first one is uh, T stat that's a T value in this case so the T value in this case is 2.88 Since we have this t value, uh, we will see that the t of 10 is larger than the t critical. Okay, therefore we reject the noun and we accept the alternative. Okay, that means there are a few sentences that you can write. Okay, that means one. Um, this positive correlation is significant. So there is a significant correlation between drinks per month and marijuana per month. Okay, this the 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 correlation is significant. Okay, they two are correlated to each other. Okay, and also, um, how do we how do we assume um, whether this correlation is strong or not? Um, I have attached a thing, a criteria on this side. Okay, so we can see um, since the R since the R equals to 0.56, you can see 0.56. The, so the core relation is strong. Okay. 0.56 is in this area, so it's pretty strong. Not super strong, but pretty strong. Okay. And also when we talk about that, we have to um, explain the R square, right? The R square. Now, since the R square, or let's put it this way, since the R square, where is the R square here? Since the R square is 0 0.31, so what do we do is that we can interpret that what kind of percent of the variance in 
one variable can be interpreted or can be explained by the other variable. Okay, so here we can see that um, since R square equals two point thirty one, so like thirty one percent, thirty one percent of the variance in the uh, what we do as a y, uh, we use the y as um, the marijuana use right in the marijuana per month can be explained by the variable um, drinks per month okay um, since r square equals to that so Um, Thirty-one percent of the variance in the marijuana per month can be explained by the variance drinks per month. Okay, that's it. Uh, also, one thing to make this conclusion: whether we should reject or accept the noun, uh, we can also take a look at the p-value here, align with the drinks per month. Okay, align with the drinks per month. The p-value here. Again, we are comparing 0.05 right so if it's larger than the 0.05 we cannot reject the null hypothesis if it's smaller than 0.05 we can reject the null hypothesis so here we also see that it's smaller than 0.05 we definitely going to reject the null hypothesis which basically means that we accept the alternative hypothesis that there is a significant correlation between those two variables okay but uh, once more again um you can't assume which one causes another okay there is no causality inside of this correlation ship okay you can only say they two are correlated to each other but you cannot say um people who drinks more leads to that they use more marijuana or people who use marijuana more often leads to that they're gonna drink more. It's not it's not a causality inside of this correlation conclusion. Okay. Now, um, some people are maybe interested in like what if we pick the different x y, uh, so we can definitely try the regression, and then we put the y as the drinks, and then we put the x as the marijuana use. Now um, here we just uh, I just uh, switch those two, and you can see um, the R, R R and R square they are definitely the same. They didn't change, and also even um, the T, you can see the here the T value, two point eighty eight four, two point it doesn't really change. The P value doesn't really change. Okay, so that basically means. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you put in the y, which one you put in the x, if you do in the correlation test. That's it.